Hello everybody! And is everybody well today? <laughs> I am so delighted to hear that. And me? Oh yes! Still vertical and still above the grass! Thank you! <laughs> and today is a lovely summer's day. We have officially entered into summer here in the UK. Uh, that doesn't always mean that we're going to get those sizzling temperatures of the Caribbean, no. But today is promising to be as high as 26 degrees Celsius. Mm. So where are we going to go to today? Somewhere exciting perhaps? Oh yes, we are. Now, Dr. Todd, who is a medical practitioner in the state of Ohio in America, he wrote me to tell me that he also is a commercial pilot who loves to work with simulation. Hmm. He said he found a very interesting flight between La Paz in Bolivia and Cusco in Peru. Hmm. He said there were some very interesting SIDS and STARS with approaches that challenge you, he said. And he uses Navigraph and of course I did check and all of the charts and SIDS and STARS are there. So I did some research into this because as you know, I'm a propeller uh, rated commercial pilot, not a jet one. And I remember flying in and out of Bolivia back in the early 60s. I was in the C-47 and uh, when we went in there, we had to wind our way around the mountains because obviously there's a service ceiling of a C-47. Depends on the load, of course. And uh, I remember that there was no pressurization at all in there. The interesting thing about La Paz is that it is the sixth highest airport in elevation in the world. It's number six. The first five, one through five, are all in China. So what is the altitude or the elevation of this airport? 13,323 feet. Now, if you're familiar with FAA regulations or CAA, Civil Aviation Authority regulations, they want you to be on oxygen if you are flying for extended periods above 10,000 feet. And the specific regulation in America says if you are more than 30 minutes between 10,000 and 12,000, then you must put on an oxygen mask. Oh, yes. So here's the situation. The people in La Paz live at the elevation of 13,323 feet above sea level. Are they all wearing oxygen masks as they walk around doing their business and going to the market or having their meals, going to church, having weddings, going for a swim over in Lake Titicaca or wherever? No, of course not. All their lungs have been developed and work perfectly normal for them at that elevation. It's only for people who have been at the lower elevations who go suddenly to that elevation that's going to suffer from potential hypoxia, which is the lack of oxygen. So what do we do about flying from an airport, which is the sixth highest, 
at 13,323 feet. And then we go to Cusco, which is the 21st highest airport in the world, which is 10,860 feet in elevation. My, that's going to be interesting. Then would we all have to wear oxygen? What about the passengers? Are they going to have to wear oxygen? And here's the other thing about pressurization. Boeing tried to make a standard pressurization inside the aircraft of 8,000 feet because that's the most comfortable for the passengers. I don't know if you realize that, but that's what happens when you climb and you climb to 36, 38,000 feet or whatever your cruising altitude is. The inside the aircraft air pressure it would be the same as if you were at 8,000 feet. Now, those things, they, if you remember all of those things that the stewardesses tell you, emergency procedures, lights, exits, this side, that side, seats up, and all, the, all of that. They also point out one critical little thing. In the event of pressure loss, you know, masks will drop with oxygen from the overhead in order that you can breathe. And those can deploy at anything above 8,000 feet. That's, I understand, that is the system. So how do you go about doing that? By the way, when all of these masks drop and the, you're not expecting it, the pilots refer to it as the rubber jungle. <laughs> so how do you fly a Boeing 737 at that altitude from that elevation, 13,000 feet plus, to another one which is nearly 11,000 feet without the rubber jungle deploying? Good question, isn't it? I did a lot of research into this. Because as I said, I've never flown pressurized airplanes. In fact, I was lucky if the C-47, if I could find all of the holes to plug them up with tape to stop them from whistling. Pressurization in a C-47? Ha! Forget it! <laughs> so what do pilots like me do when we have to fly consistently at those high altitudes in a non-pressurized airplane? Well, I did take some mountain flying and uh, around the American Rocky Mountains, pretty high stuff there. And the airport that I was working out of had an elevation of 7,500 feet, 7,500, less than, of course, La Paz and Cusco. But the mountain passes and the places I was learning to fly around and close to and learn how to recognize wind patterns, eddies, all the rest of it, so that I could fly wherever I needed to without the risk of crashing into the mountainside. So all of that was done at high altitude. And while I was staying there during all of this, obviously my lungs became acclimated to that particular elevation over the few weeks I was there. So going higher wasn't going to be a problem for me. I was young. I was a young, bold pilot. I would fly anything, anywhere, anytime. <laughs> so I would be able to fly in and out of La Paz and not feel the problem. So did I use oxygen according to all the regulations? <clears throat> Just a minute. <clears throat> well, of course I did. <laughs> Uh, well, we do what we can, right? So what are we going to do today? How are we going to stop the deployment, the automatic deployment of all the rubber jungle? Well, I did research and at the Boeing website, apparently if you're going to be flying into high altitude airports on a regular basis, there is a switch that they put into the aircraft that says high altitude, and normal. Mm. 
and the switch for the altitude then overrides all of the normal standard defaults. And the other thing that you have to do is in that cockpit, and that would be at the back of the pilot, there's a panel on the wall there with all little pull push circuit breaker switches. You find the one that automatically would deploy the M, the mass in the passenger cabin and you disable it. So that's the first thing that you have to do to stop all the masks from deploying automatically. You have to disable that. There is an altitude warning horn as well, and that you have to disable. And flying around all the mountains, I may have to use the terrain warning inhibitor as well. There's such a lot of things to have to remember when flying between La Paz and Cusco. Now, El Alto Airport, that's the one at La Paz, is located in the Andes Mountains in western Bolivia. And in that range of the, and by the way, I'm reading now from the airport uh, overview. And in that uh, region, the Andes consists of two distinct ranges the Western Andes and the higher Eastern Andes. The airport at La Paz is right between the two ranges. Now, the runways are on a high plateau that overlooks the eastern portions of the city in the basin below. And to the east-northeast, terrain rises to over 17,000 feet. And to the east-southeast, Mount Ilimane rises to 21,000 feet, all within a matter of a few miles. And it also says, caution, birds are in the vicinity of the airport. And then it says something else which is going to be very important as we contemplate this flight. Due to the airport's high altitude, True airspeed is normally more than 25% higher than the indicated airspeed, and that should be taken into consideration. And when you look at the Cusco plates and the information about that, even though that's at 10,800 feet, they also say that the uh, true airspeed is normally more than 15% higher. And why is that? Good question. Well, you've got the pitot tubes, right, that stick on the side, and what they do is they pick up all of the air molecules going in. The higher you go, the fewer molecules there are to go into the pitot tube. So then that gives you a different reading on all the instrumentation. The whole thing comes down to also as density altitude. Now, one of the things that is going to be very important to point out that at La Paz, the runway there is 13,124 feet long, 4,000 meters. And why so long? Because if you've got an aeroplane, and you consider all the density altitude, and if you get a warm day, yes, you get warm days at La Paz. If you get a warm day, then the air is so thin, you're not going to generate enough lift to get off the runway in the normal length that you expect. So that is something that you have to bear in mind. And the runway at Cusco is also quite long too. The Cusco Airport is 11,155 feet long or 3,400 meters. So it's going to be plenty long enough to land and the other one will be plenty long enough to take off, but it will take longer running on the runway before we get enough lift. All of these are considerations for flying around the Andes. Isn't that interesting? Now, will that, of course, translate into my little simulator here? Some of it will. And 
I'll have to make adjustments. Am I going to wear an oxygen mask because I'm going to be at assimilated 13,000 plus feet? No, I'm not. It would interfere with drinking my uh, diet cola. <laughs> so obviously there will be some things I won't do. All right. Now, having said all of that, let me just check the other information here. I did look and there are no direct flights between La Paz and Cusco. In order to get to Cusco from La Paz, you have to first of all go to Lima, Peru, change and then fly back. So we're going to make our own flight plan. And La Paz, Bolivia, I did find some freeware scenery. There's no commercial scenery I could find. I did find some freeware scenery and I did try it out. And I went back and forth with Dr. Todd in Ohio about this. And when you look at that scenery, there are a couple of small problems with it. One, the runway wasn't marked at all. It was, well, it just wasn't there. But the surrounding area was quite good. So I went to the native P3D scenery, and this is for version 5.2. And the airport is all in detail. Everything is there. Of course, it's defaulted to the standard scenery of La Paz. Not exactly accurate, but it will have to do. And that actually is the better scenery between those two. Now, for Cusco, again, I couldn't find any commercial scenery, but I did find freeware scenery. And actually, that is better than the default P3D scenery. So I'm going to be using freeware scenery for our arrival at Cusco. And we'll show you that when we get there. I'm going to start out at stand P3. So if you're going to follow this flight and you go to the standard P3D and you do the drop down menu for your start position, P3 is where I'm going to be parked. Right, having said all of that, I think it's time that we go into pre-flight and see what we can make of the flight, shall we? Well, here we are. We're looking at windy.com and right here, here you can see El Alto Airport right by La Paz. And here, this is this area here. This is all Lake Titicaca, the highest lake in the world. Now, looking at the weather forecast, it says wind is 330 degrees at six knots, visibility 10 kilometers or more, no significant clouds. And Q&H is 1036, high pressure over the area. But look at this, it is VFR. Now, if you look at the pattern here of the little uh, direction arrows, that uh, wind is going all over the place. So I don't know which runway we're actually going to use. This is the runway that uh, is there at La Paz. And we are going to be parked right about here, somewhere in this vicinity. Although the native P3D scenery doesn't show all of this detail. But we'll be in that vicinity. My suspicion is that we will be departing on this runway, runway 28. Runway 28 is my, is my guess. Pretty big airport in the top end of Bolivia. Going over to Cusco. Here's Cusco. You can see it's all in the uh, high mountain area here. And the wind is 290 degrees at three knots. Visibility 10 kilometers or more. No significant clouds. It's going to be a lovely day. Q&H is 1032. Again, high pressure is over the area. And it is also VFR. So which runway are we likely to come into? 
Well, my guess would be probably this one. And therefore, we'll need to exit off to come to uh, one of these stands right here at the terminal building. Uh, which one we'll come into will depend on other aircraft that happens to be there at the time. But as I say, my suspicion is that it will be uh, runway 28 to come in to land right there. All right, let's go into sim brief. We are Ryanair and we are 186 and we're going to depart from SLLP and we're going to go to SPZO. We'll look at that alternate in just a moment. Here's our airframe so that SimBrief can make all the calculations. Uh, there's our registration. We're Cruise Profile 6. Schedule flight time is 1 hour 30 minutes. It's calling for a departure on runway 10. I'm going to change that to 28. And no extra fuel. We'll leave the altitude to see what it comes up with. We are going to be full and we will still have one ton of cargo. Yes, indeed. This is the route that it's returned. And here you can see the departure will go out here and then straight across Lake Titicaca all the way on up to Cusco with the alternate of being Andajuelas, which I hope we won't have to do if uh, we should, should be a straightforward flight. Now I am going to make a change here. I'm going to change the departure SID and I'm going to put in the PAZ and I'm, there we go. Now that one says it is valid. If we're departing runway 28, we need to go straight to Paz, then to Eliaco, take the UM all the way in following that procedure. Okay, I'll show you how that works out in just a moment. I'm going to save the flight and we'll generate the flight plan. All right, here we go. There's the originating, the destination, the alternate. We're flight level 360 is what we've been given. There's the block fuel. Airtime is 59 minutes. So there we go, direct to Paz, direct to Alaco, and then take that particular route. No remarks. We're Ryanair 186. And right here, this is the cruise altitude right there. This is our alternate, should things go pear-shaped, it could, but we're not anticipating that. Cost index is six. Here's the average wind. And then down here, this, this is the total flight plan and routing and I'll post this in the description box below the video. Now here's where we're going to make a change in the descent. We're not going to get down to 10,000 feet for takeoff or for landing. So we'll be using these three. 310, that's 31,000 feet, 200 and 150. So we'll be using those three figures when we put them into the descent in the FMC. No significant weather over the area. Everything looks like it's going to be a nice day and a nice flight. So looking at our altitude, let's see. This is 34,000. This is a little bit below our altitude. And you can see that we're going to be facing 
some fairly stiff headwinds all the way from La Paz over to Cusco. Ah, uh, well, I suppose into every life there must be a little headwind. Don't like them, but that's it. And here, of course, is our vertical profile. Look at this. <laughs> Have you ever seen, look at, look at all of this, this height here. You don't normally see this. I mean, on all the other flights, all of this was way, way down below. But here we're starting up way high and going up to top of climb. There's the Ilmox and that's when we start that process of arrival and then descending until we finally get into Cusco right here. Some pretty high peaks in between. But that is not the usual po vertical profile that you would expect to see. All right, let's go into Navigraph charts. All right, we click on flights. We click New Flight from SimBrief and use that. We're going to open the charts list. Just for reference, here's uh, the airport at La Paz. So you can see the actual picture of it. And this is the weather overview. And remember, Due to the airport's high altitude, true airspeed is normally more than 25% higher than the indicated airspeed. So, things to watch out for. We're going to need the airport parking and takeoff. And this is the terminal building here. We're going to be somewhere in this vicinity. Not sure how it will translate onto the uh, chart when we but we'll find out when we get into the cockpit. And we are going straight from the runway, runway 28, going to, La, to Paz VOR, and then taking that route all the way across. Going to our destination, we're going to need the airport information. We're coming in on runway 28 and we'll need both of these. I'm going to pin both of these. We'll need this. We'll be coming in and intercepting this route, the Ilmox approach. And that will take us down here and around the mountain passes until we get to here. And then it will, this will take over. This is where it continues. This is in more detail. And then that will bring us out over to here. Okay. And if we have a missed approach, this then is our procedure for making the missed approach. And we come out and we simply hold, do a left pattern hold, over that particular waypoint. Let's hope that we don't have to do that. And this is the, I'll pin that to the bottom two. This is the uh, star to bring us in, to get us into that area. Here's Cusco, there's the VOR right there, and we'll be putting all of these things into the frequencies so that we can pick them up on the instrument panel. All right. Let's close everything down. We've got, we've got our flight plan. We know where we're going from and to, let's hope that nothing interferes with it and that we have a good run. The weather is looking good. I think we'll have a marvelous flight.
Well, hello there, Dr. Todd. Do come on in and take your seat. Don't forget, buckle up. Now, here we are. We are at stand P3 using the PMDG standard default scenery here, which of course is La Paz, La Alta Airport at La Paz in Bolivia. We are 13,323 feet above sea level. How about that? Are you getting lightheaded yet? Hmm. No hypoxia? Good. Well, because if you did, then we're going to have to put on the masks, you know. And then how am I going to drink my Diet Cola? <laughs> oh, well, we'll just have to work that out. Here's where we start. Ah, now, here's what I have to do. That's the altitude horn cutout. That's the first thing that happened. Now, in aircraft that are equipped to fly regularly at these really high altitudes, the switch is located just below here. And all I've done is I've just cut out the horn so we don't get drowned in sound. And in case we need to do other things, down over there is where the terrain inhibitor horn is also located. So if I have to, I may have to arm that during the flight. We'll have to see. So there's the first thing. All right. Anyway, we've got 25 volts. That's enough to start the pumps. And let's get the APU going because we do need to have that going because we need to get the aircraft all properly aired out. I'm not sure what the temperature is here at the moment, but we'll find out in just a moment. Low oil pressure light has come on and gone off. The engine gas temperature has risen very nicely and is coming back down. As soon as it comes down to about four, then this light here will come on and then I can switch to the electricity being generated by the auxiliary power unit. And coming up. There we are. We now have 115 volts. So I can turn on the IRS on the left and the right. That's the GPS system. I can turn on the galley. Maybe we'll get some tea. There's the emergency exit lights. No smoking. Fasten seatbelt sign. Now we'll turn on the left and the right window heat. I'll leave the probes off for the moment. And I'm going to turn on the left and the right electrical hydraulic pumps. Then over here, I'm going to put the APU bleed on and turn the packs on and listen. There's that rush of air. And the temperature here outside is a chilly three degrees for, uh, Celsius, three degrees, not very much. But then you have to remember Bolivia at this time of year, this is the start of winter. So we are right on that cusp of between the good weather and the bad weather. So we're making this flight at the best time of year. And now I'll turn on the position strobe lights and we are ready. Now I've been around and I've kicked the tires and I've made sure that there are no dents in the fuselage and everything is looking good. I actually cleaned all the windows and made sure they're sparkling so that we'll be able to see all the magnificent mountain scenery that Bolivia and the Andes in general has to offer. Right, now let's time to go in and start the FMC. 
I'm checking that we have the latest air rack and the program is correct. So we go into our start, it's SLLP is our start and we are at gate P3. So I'm going to put 3 in and there it is, it comes up. We're pretty much assured that this is the correct one even though we're using P3D default and I'll accept that with no problem and put it in there. That gives us our starting position. Now we'll go to root and we'll start that SLLP to start and SPZO SP and ZO destination we are Ryanair RYR and we're number 186 next page we go first of all direct to PAS which is the first DOR PAZ and that's the one VOR DME La Paz and then we're going to go direct to Elaco E-L-A-K-O and then we're taking the Uniform Mic 657 Uniform Mic 657 and that will take us to J-U-L J-U-L and then we take the Uniform Victor 11 Uniform Victor 11 and that will take us to Ilmox I-L-M-O-X and that is our route activate execute departures and arrivals let's go to departure but in order to do that we'll go directly into ground and get our departure clearance and that's 1 to 1.9 and we're going to go to the north the pass ground Ryanair 186 ready to taxi north departure Ryanair 186 taxi to and hold short of runway 28 using taxiway Bravo contact tower on 118.3 when ready taxi hold short runway 28 using taxiway Bravo Ryanair 186 well, we have our clearance and it is going to be runway 28, so I'm going to put 28 in there, execute that, go to arrivals at Cusco, and we're coming in on the RNAV 28 approach, and we're using the IMOX, there it is, the MO3 Alpha and it will be the Ilmox transition and execute that. Go into legs and I'm going to switch the plan and I'm now going to go through the plan and see how this works. So I'm going to step through the plan now and each point there's Ilmox URC, which of course we're not going to go to, so I'm going to take the Ilmox here and I'm going to go back and put Ilmox directly over the top. Now we'll start that again and go through the steps. There's Ilmox and we're looking good and coming down. Now, here's all of those waypoints curving through the valleys all the way through. Look at that, all the way until we finally intercept the final for a landing at Cusco. That's the plan. Right, I'm switching back to map and I'm going to set it at 20 miles. Now, since we're departing runway 28, we'll need to set the heading of 278 into our course for departure 278 I'll do 278 here as well 
and I'll do yours as well. Is that okay, Todd? Now we're going to be climbing to 36,000 feet, so I'm going to put 36,000 feet in this in anticipation. I'm also going to put 36,000 feet here in our flight altitude and the this is going to be the interesting bit the landing altitude is going to be it's 10,860 so we're going to put in 10,900 perhaps if we can get that so spinning it around they're in increments of 50. Ah, 10,900. 10,900. We have it in. Okay, that's looking good. Right, now, time to go ahead and finish off the route. Perform the initialization. We have 2,104 kilograms of fuel for reserve, which would make it 2.1. So 2.1. And we have a trip and taxi going to take 2,802. So that comes to 4,906 or 4.9. So 4.9 in there. And then cost index is six. Double click the zero fuel weight and that comes up with the calculations. Our flight level is 360. The cruise wind is 283 at 49. 283 at 49. The transition altitude is six is eight one eight zero eighteen thousand feet so i'm going to put that in there execute that and one limit we'll take the three degrees i'm going to go back now to fix and the fix is sp zo and we need a four mile circle and a 10 mile circle and a 30 mile circle now I'm going to go to descent go to forecast <clears throat> transition level is set by ATC so I'm leaving that as it is but I'm going to need the levels the information for the descent levels from page 8 of the flight plan bundle And that will be for 310, <clears throat> that's 31,000 feet. And then twenty thousand feet, and then fifteen thousand feet. Q and H at our destination is one zero three four. One zero three four. Now I'm going to put the information in for these three levels. At 310 it is 279 at 46. 279 at 46. At 200 it is 266 at 21. 266 at 21. And at 150 it is 299 at 2. 299 at 2 and execute that go to route go to takeoff we're going to use flaps 10 we should be able to do everything very nicely on flaps 10 and center of gravity double click that and it gives us the value we are 23.7 and the trim should be 4.79 one click on each of these says that at B1 will be 138, rotation 139, and liftoff at 142. 
Let's hope we manage to do that. So now I'm going to go up here. I'm putting in 142 in the ILS map. All right, got that. Now I'm going to flight director on, flight director on, and BNAV, LNAV lights both come on. So now I'm going to arm that. I'm going to put the VOR1 and VOR2 on, and then I'm going to put the frequencies for two important VORs. The VOR, the first one, is going to be for PAS, which is our starting point, and the PAS VOR is 115.7. So I'm going to put 115.7. and 0.7. Now that has put the information in here, and we are 3.3 DME miles from the PAS VOR. And in the second one, I'm going to put in the Cusco VOR, which is 114.9. 114.9. And that will give us the DME mileage to our destination. So we have that information available to us. Right, I'm going to turn on the yaw damper and the flight continuity light went out. I'm now going to put the weather on this. I'm going to double click the data and that will bring up the data. I'm going to put terrain on yours and put the data on. And if you notice, the terrain radar is hitting an awful lot of red, which means everything around us is pretty high mountains. I'll switch to RTO, bring up the stairs and the doors. There you can see the stairs folding in underneath the forward compartment. Right, we are now ready to start our engines and taxi to the active. So we want to back out. Our nose will need to go to the right and our tail to the left. All right, let's do a quick check. Before start, fuel is all on, good windows all locked, seatbelt signs are on, door lights are out, MCP is programmed and correct. Takeoff thrust bugs are done, speeds are done, CDU pre flight correct, rudder airline trim is correct, taxi takeoff briefing is done. We are going to reverse out, nose to the right, tail to the left, and now I'm putting on the anti collision light right there. Right, I've started the Navigraph, which is now available here at the lower right of the screen. And you can see where we are at the terminal. There is only that short runway that we need to go to get to the departure runway. So, here we go then. We'll get in touch with the ground. Cockpit to ground. We've been cleared for pushback and start. They want the tail to our left. Roger that. Ready to push. Tail to the left. Parking brakes off. Parking brakes are off. Now, I'm going to turn off the left and brakes the right released. packs because we now need to put all of the energy into spinning the engines to get them started. Here we go. All right, starting engine number one. The start valve has opened, and here you can see the N2 is spinning up. When this gets to 24, then I'll bring in the fuel. It's coming up very nicely. There it is. 
Right, fuel is in. And it's igniting, the engine gas temperature is climbing. Looking for the low oil pressure light to go up, it just did. Should be able to hear the engines in a moment. There, there's the engines. And I'm looking for 115 volts to appear up here, and it does. Switching to engine number two, and starting engine number two. Start valve has opened. The N2 is spinning up. When it gets to 24, we'll bring in the fuel. Brake is on and introducing the fuel. Brake set. Now I'm looking for the engine gas temperature to rise, and it is, it's coming up. Next, I'm looking for the low oil pressure right, light to go out. Watch for the slip release from guidance on your left. Have a good flight. Thank you, gentlemen. And this is coming up very nicely. And there's the engine starting. Looking now for 115 volts up here. We've got it. And as soon as that tick mark is cleared, showing that we have <coughs> a balanced engines. There. Now it's balanced. Now I can switch to the main engines for power. Turn on the packs, turn off the APU bleed, and turn off the APU. Good, we're doing all right. <clears throat> now I'm going to go to flaps 10. Turning on the TCAS. Now this is the default B3D scenery for La Paz. <clears throat> and you can see that we have a perfectly beautiful day. There's snow-capped mountains in the background there. And there are the buildings of La Paz. Pretty good detail considering that it is just a general representation. And the active runway is just out there. So it looks pretty good. Down here, I have the radio set to 1098 for minimums. There's the local barometric pressure. Everything is looking good there. The VOR for La Paz is right there. The one over here is for Cusco, which we'll pick up as soon as we get airborne. The engines are pretty, looking pretty good. Everything is stable. And we have flaps 10 and the gear lights are on. Right, we're going to turn on the taxi lights and we'll do the after start. So generators, they're on. Probe heat is now on. Anti-ice not required at the moment. Isolation valve is correct. Engine start levers idle. Right deck door closed and locked. Recall is check. Flight controls check. Flaps. We have green lights. Stabilizer trim is correct. 4.7. Auto brake is RTO, speed brake lever down D10, ground equipment is clear. We are ready to taxi to the active runway. Now it's going to be different taxiing at this elevation than from a lower one because of the density altitude. Remember, we have to face that. So brake is off. 
and give ourselves a little boost to get ourselves moving. And everything is looking good. We have to also watch out for bird strikes. Lots of birds in this area. But this is a lovely day. Look at that. I don't see a cloud in the sky. And this is the beginning of winter here at La Paz. with the design of the buildings even though they're standard buildings they they do not look out of place
is released to go to work. We are now out of the controlled airspace, so all lights are now off. Strobe lights are on. We're still at flaps five and still sluggishly climbing. We have a lot of weight, so we're not exactly a, uh, a fighter jet. There we go, we're starting to speed up a bit. But we're on course. Right, flaps one. Now flaps are up. Lake Titicaca is ahead of us. Our speed is building up a little bit, but we do have some bumps. So I'm leaving the seatbelt signs fastened for the while. And here is the view from the cockpit on this glorious day. As we approach Lake Titicaca over there, and yes, there are some bumps as the air masses are changeable. And over there, snow-capped mountains. This is winter, of course, for Bolivia.
to hear that. And where are we? We are 26 DME miles from our destination. So please take your seat and help me land this. We are descending very nicely. We're at 16,000 feet and we are going down the valley and we're following the path all the way in. So now I'm going to turn on all lights, going to engines continuous, and I'm going to ask the crew to get ready to land. We're not that far away. And I'm going to go to Flaps five. And we're now going down the main valley.
approaching minimums. Uh, minimums. Minimums. We are committed to land. One thousand. Right in front of the main 
building here. Stand number four. Okay, brake on. And and shut down. Stairs are going down. Okay, everything is clear. The Self-loading cargo is self-exiting. <laughs> so we'll turn the fuel off, APU off, and battery off. And shutdown is complete. Well, we made it. We made it all the way into Cusco. We didn't crash into any mountains, but we did come close, that's for certain. And, of course, I wore my oxygen mask the whole time. <laughs> yes, the whole time. <laughs> mm. And we're here at 10,800 feet. And it was a lovely flight. Beautiful scenery all the way. Well, Dr. Todd, I hope that we did you right. And thank you. Thank you very much for the suggestion. I do appreciate it very much. It was a challenging flight, working out all the details about pressurization and certainly coming up full in the face once again with density altitude issues. It's been a long time since I've had to worry about things like that, but it brought all those memories back. Thank you for that. So, I'll see you and I'll see everyone else next week for a flight of Ryanair 186. Bye everybody.